What's going on guys, it's CTA Prime back here again. Recently there was some new firmware released for the Raspberry Pi that actually allows us to overclock up to 2 GHz. Upon the initial release of the Pi 4, there was a hard limit set with the firmware at 1.75 and there was no easy way to change this. But now with the updated firmware, we can actually overclock our Raspberry Pi 4 to 2 GHz. Stock is 1.5, so that's a 500 MHz gain and it's actually pretty decent for a small single board computer like this. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to overclock your Raspberry Pi 4 up to two gigahertz. In the past, I've done a video on overclocking up to 1.75, but with this new firmware release, I figured it was time to make a new video. I will also go over overclocking the GPU, and then we'll run a few benchmarks to see what kind of performance gains we get from going from 1.5 gigahertz, the stock clocks on the Raspberry Pi 4, to two gigahertz on all four cores. So before we get started here, just a word of warning, when overclocking your Raspberry Pi 4, it's gonna produce more heat. The Pi 4 already gets hot enough as it is, so you're not gonna be able to go to two gigahertz with no heat sink. And it's also not gonna work with a cheap Amazon or eBay heat sink, like this 20 millimeter aluminum one you see here. If you wanna overclock the Pi and you don't wanna add active cooling, I would suggest the Flirt case, but going to 2 GHz will still get kind of hot, so I personally recommend some type of active cooling, like the iUniker 40mm aluminum heatsink with fan, or the new ice tower for the Raspberry Pi 4. Now this will keep the thing absolutely chilly while you're at 2 GHz. It'll never overheat with this setup here. And by the way, you're following this tutorial at your own risk. I'm not responsible for any bricked Raspberry Pis, burn up Raspberry Pis, or hurt feelings. Okay, so now that you've been warned, it's time to get started. First things first, in the description of this video, I'm going to leave a text file. I'm also going to leave the text there. This tells you exactly what you need to do. We're going to overclock to 2 gigahertz. If you want to overclock the GPU, we can also do that. I suggest around 600 megahertz. I've been able to go to 620, but I think 600 megahertz is the sweet spot. So all of this will be listed down below. I'm also going to leave a Dropbox text file so you can download it if needed. First thing we're gonna do, grab our keyboard, Control, Alt, T. It's gonna open up a terminal window. Whenever I'm doing any kind of overclocking with the Raspberry Pi, I usually monitor my temperature. And you can do that by typing out watch minus N1 VC Gen CMD measure underscore temp. That's gonna give us a real time reading on the CPU temperature. Now remember, I'm using the Ice Tower cooler, so this is gonna be much cooler if you don't have one of these. So we have the temp. I'm gonna open up another terminal window, Control Alt T, and I'm gonna measure my frequency. Now this is in real time. So while it's sitting at idle, we're at 600 megahertz. But if I put a load on it, it's gonna to go to 1.5. And I'll show you that real quick by running Sysbench. If we take a look over here at the frequency, jumps up to 1.5. So in order to overclock the Raspberry Pi, we need to access the config.txt on the SD card. You can actually shut the Raspberry Pi down, place it in a PC, and modify it from there. That's one way that I usually do it, but we can also do it all on the Raspberry Pi. Now, for some reason, your Raspberry Pi does not boot up after we add these overclock lines. Like I said, you can always take the SD card out of the Pi and modify it on a Windows PC using Notepad++. I'll leave a link in the description. And if you really want to know how to do that, you can check out my last overclocking video. That's exactly what I did in that video. But for this one, we're going to do it all on the Raspberry Pi. Now it's time to update our Raspbian image. So we're going to open up another terminal, and you need to be connected online for this to work. Control-Alt-T. From within the terminal, we're going to type out sudo apt git update. Press Enter. Now we need to do a distribution upgrade. So from within the terminal, sudo apt dist upgrade. Press enter. Yes. This could take a little while depending on how fast your internet connection is, so just let it finish up. All right, so now that our operating system is fully up to date, it's time to update the Raspberry Pi's firmware. We're gonna do an RPI update. Like I mentioned, follow this at your own risk. These are newer firmwares that aren't available yet in the upgrade. This feature will probably be included in the next release of Raspbian, but for now, like I mentioned, follow this at your own risk. From the terminal, we're gonna type in sudo rpi update. 
Now I might get an error here because I'm already updated. It's gonna give you a warning. Like I said, follow this at your own risk. Press Y. I've personally done this to three Raspberry Pis already, two four gig models and one two gig model and haven't had any issues. So it went off without a hitch. It actually grabbed a newer package and installed it to my Raspberry Pi. Now it's time to overclock. We're gonna shut this terminal down and we're gonna open up a new one. We need to access our config.txt. So from within the terminal, we're gonna type in sudo nano boot config.txt. Press enter. From here, we're gonna use our arrow keys on our keyboard to go all the way down to the bottom. And in order to get my Raspberry Pi 4 stable at two gigahertz, I had to do some over voltage. So over voltage equals four and our arm frequency 2000. So this will bring us up to two gigahertz. If you have a problem booting with this, like I mentioned, you can always take the SD card out of the Pi, place it in a PC and edit this file from Notepad++. You might need to add a little more voltage. You could go to five or just totally delete these lines here and go back to 1.5 gigahertz. I also mentioned overclocking the GPU. If you really want to, right under this one, we can add the overclock for the GPU. GPU frequency equals 600. So now we're gonna be going from 400 on the GPU to 600 and 1.5 gigahertz on the CPU to two gigahertz. You wanna press Control X, save modified buffer, press Y, and enter. Now we need to reboot the system and we'll be at two gigahertz. So we're gonna type in sudo reboot. I'm just gonna bring up my arm frequency and temperature real quick. So here we are, we're now overclocked to two gigahertz on the CPU, that's all four cores. Keep an eye on the frequency. I'm gonna run a sysbench, it'll jump up to two gigahertz. We'll do it one more time. And that's it. We now have all four cores on the Raspberry Pi overclocked to two gigahertz. And I've even added some GPU overclock for a little extra GPU performance. I have already gone through and run a bunch of benchmarks. I got some charts coming up for you. I just want to show you the performance gain from 1.5 to two gigahertz on the Raspberry Pi 4. So first up, we have a simple sysbench with a max prime of 2000 at the stock clocks of 1.5 gigahertz on the multi-threaded side. It finished in 2.4 seconds. Single threaded, 9.4 seconds. With the two gigahertz overclock, multi-threaded, 1.8 seconds. Single, seven seconds. So with that 500 megahertz overclock, we have a really nice jump in performance. When benchmarking Linpack, we see the same exact thing. Much better performance with this two gigahertz overclock. And I expected this because we have a higher frequency on the CPU now. As for gaming performance, we actually gained 3.5 FPS in the Open Arena Quake 3 test. And that's just with the CPU overclock. But with the CPU overclock to two gigahertz and the GPU at 620 megahertz, we gained 12.9 FPS in the Open Arena test, which is phenomenal for this small single board computer almost a 13 FPS gain just by overclocking. And finally, I ran a quick online JavaScript benchmark. This is the Octane 2.0 benchmark with the overclock 10,753 at the stock 1.5 gigahertz, 7,760. Now the GPU overclock with this really didn't help out at all, but I already had it applied, so I figured I'd test it here. So with this overclock, it actually made the whole operating system a lot snappier. Unfortunately, YouTube video playback just isn't gonna be fixed by overclocking the GPU or the CPU. We're still gonna have stutters here, even at 720p, and until the Raspberry Pi Foundation comes up with a fix for this, this is what we're gonna get. 720p. We're still gonna have lots of drop frames. Now it actually seems to handle it a little better than it did at the stock clocks, but overall, I mean, using the Raspberry Pi 4 with Raspbian for YouTube video playback just isn't going to be a great experience. I've also blocked 60 FPS here with h 264 So if I turn that off, we're only at five drop frames. But if I reload this, it's going to go to 720p, 60 FPS, and we'll get a ton of drop frames. 
so it just doesn't like 60 FPS playback. If you want to get by with using h 264 fi just turn on block 60 FPS videos and you'll have a lot less drop frames, but you'll only be running at 30 FPS. So that's pretty much it for this video, guys. I really appreciate you watching. If you have any questions at all, let me know in the comments below. It'd also be really cool if you could hit that like button or maybe subscribe to the channel. But like always, thanks for watching.